morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. So kindly mute your microphones. Kindly mute your microphones. Welcome. I hope uh, we have, uh, we woke up well and good and sound. I would like us to, in the chat box, uh, share with us where um, you're joining from, which if it's Nigeria, what part of Nigeria you are joining from. Share with us your name and what part of Nigeria, which country? I see there are some Ghanaians. Here with us, you are from Ghana, Accra. Where are you from? From the Volta region. Where are you from? And please mute your microphones as you join. Please mute your microphones. Mute your microphones. Oh, Ghana Volta region. Oh, great. Welcome, Thomas. Welcome, Thomas. Welcome. Ghana Accra. Great. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. I see. I see you. Alex. Um, I see Stephen. Stephen is from um, Taraba State. Welcome. Hayford from Ghana Central Region, welcome. Olawale from Nigeria. Where from Nigeria? Okay, I see. Uh, I see Paul from Portacot. Whoa, welcome. Okay, I see Xavier from Ghana Central Region. Welcome. I see Solomon from Akwaibom, Nigeria. Great. Welcome. Please kindly mute your microphone as you join. Kindly mute your microphone as you join. Okay. Let us mute our microphone as we join the meeting. Recording in progress. Please mute your microphone as you join. Welcome. Edo Uche Chuku from Edo. I see Adebayo, Nigeria. Katherine Miriam from Ibadan. Uh, Michael from Lagos. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Great, great, nice to have you here and to begin this wonderful journey in transforming our classrooms using FET simulations. I see David from Ondo State. Wow. I see Kojo from Ghana Western Region. I see Joel from Nigeria. Are all Please mute your microphone. Okay. Let's mute our microphone. I see Adeola from Lekki, Lagos. Lawrence from Niger State. Great. Welcome. As we join. Okay. Welcome. So let me still share. You know, for those that haven't gotten the link, we're just going to wait for five minutes extra for others to join before we start. Please, as you join, let us know where you are joining from, your name. And let us mute our microphones, please. I just want to gain a spirit. Can we mute our microphone, Mr. Michael? Welcome. You are welcome, everyone. I see Kenneth Stephen from Kaduna. Great. 
Susie also from Kaduna, Ajasa from Ogun State. I see Agogo Isaac from Gombe State, Lawrence from Ninja State. Okon from Lagos. It's nice to be here. It's nice to have you here, Stephen. Thank you so much. Oh, I see Hannah from Abuja. Welcome, Hannah. Welcome, welcome. So we're just going to give um, an extra five minutes for others to join and we commence. As, let us mute our microphone as we join, please. Okay. So as you join, let us know your name and where you are joining from. Is this, uh, we are quite excited. Okay, I see. Kelvin Wow from Enugu State. Good. Akpan from Lagos. Uh, Tosin from Ogun State. Great. Chioma from Lagos. Yusuf from Lagos. David from Lagos. Great, great. Olawumi from Lagos, Akin Lade from Lagos. Great to have you all here. You are all welcome. Daniel from Abuja, you are welcome. Yes, I would introduce myself, Kojo. Okay, very soon I will introduce myself when we begin. Okay, so let me welcome everyone first. Please let us mute our microphones. Okay. Clementina from Ogun State, Michael from Kumasi, Ghana. Welcome, Moses from Ghana. You are all welcome. Okay, Ambrose from Ghana, you are all welcome. Thank you, thank you so much for joining Ellie. In three minutes' time, we uh, we would join. Uh, we would start up. So let's still wait for more people to join. And as we come in, please let us mute our microphones. Mute your microphone and do tap in the chat box where you are joining from. Yes, Sahid from Lagos, welcome. Please mute your microphones, okay? I have automatically muted you, you know, as in it's an automatic setting. When you come in, your microphone is, uh, you know, muted, but I know some people will want to unmute and all. So please, please, for us to have um, a very good um, web, uh, webinar today, please let us um, uh, mute our microphones, okay? And when it's time to speak up, we would uh, let you know when to unmute and speak. We can always use the chat box so everyone can, you know, hear and uh, listen uh, well. Okay. Welcome. Is he a man? That one is your daddy's one. She was a sound of. So let us know where. Yes, it is recorded. Okay. So don't. Uh, yeah. Yes, it is recorded. Please let us mute our microphone as we join. Okay, I see Godfrey from Ghana. I see Asika from uh from where? Uh yes, yes, yes. From Lagos, and I see David uh from Bini and Regina from Ghana. So I welcome you once more. Okay, so now we have 
this is 11.05, so we are going to begin now, okay? So, yeah. As, <laughs> I see some message that says, why do we, why do we uh, need to wait for anybody? We have to, just five minutes, you know, because of uh, internet, internet problems and all, okay? So that's it. Okay. Isaiah. Isaiah. Please let us mute our microphones, okay? Ashala, are you with me? Shola? Yes, very much with me. Please can yes, you can you help me? Because I'm, yes, I'm on I'm on it. Just I'm 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 keeping an eye on the on the mics. Okay. Okay, please. good morning, everyone. Yeah, morning, please. Can you um, drop your message on the chat box now? Okay. All right. So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome once again to today's... Uh, today's webinar. And here... Quickly share my screen. So welcome once again. This meeting is going to be recorded, so don't worry. Immediately after the meeting, I will drop the recordings in the WhatsApp group. I'm also going to be sharing the WhatsApp, the link to the WhatsApp group. In case you haven't joined the WhatsApp group, I would share it in the chat description box for you to join. Okay. Well, if I see that most people are having difficulty registration, regist registering through the Zoom, Zoom link, I would also drop a Google form where you register because it's important that we get your name and email address because that's what you're going to be using throughout this workshop. For your questions, just please um, be patient. I would, uh, we, we shall um, answer your questions. Just be patient with us, okay? So, because I see some raised hands, just be patient. All questions will be answered. And I have my fellow FET colleague, colleagues that would actually answer you in the chat box. So you can go drop your questions in the chat box if you need immediate um, response. And please try to avoid um, annotating on the screen. Shola, please, can you help me shut down the annotation so people don't start, you know, drawing on the screen? Because I see a Friday Aquan um, trying to draw on the screen. Okay. Please, Friday yeah, Aquan, no, please stop. Please stop um, scribbling on the screen because everyone can see it. Okay, and it will also block some text. So. Once again, I welcome you to uh, the FET webinar. And today um, is a four weekend a series uh, workshop. So, but today we're going to be starting with introduction to STEM and FET interactive simulation to know what it is about. Okay. So for us to just, you know, I want us to be relaxed. So let's, let us not all be tensed up. So I'm going to uh, do like uh, an icebreaker opening. So I want you to think now. You know, this is very early in the morning in Nigeria or in whichever part you are, whichever part of the country you are. If you had uh, all the resources in the world, you had a private jet, you had everything, what would you like to have for breakfast today? If you had all the resources in the world, just close your eyes and imagine, you know, there are some things that you would love to eat <laughs> this morning. What would you like to have for breakfast? Let me see it in the chat box. Let's use that to relax in like two, uh, five, three minutes before I start on. Let me see. Let me see your answers in the chat box. What would you like to eat this morning? Okay. Ah, oh, Papa Nakara. Good, good. Let me see. Let me see your girl. Uh, uh, what is uh, konkote? I think that should be a Ghanaian food. Oh, pizza and juice. I see pap and beans. I see oat and milk, pap and granots. Ah, I've not tried that though. <laughs> pap and granots. I think I should try that. I think it's like gari and granots. Okay. <laughs> oh, banku and okra. Ah, wow, wow, wow. This year, woo. Hey, my people, this morning, it's a woman vegetable. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. A malane buffet, a fang soup. Oh, uh, oh, wow. Toast bread and tea, fried rice and egg, okpa. My Eastern people. 
Uh -huh. Pack the hot bread. Ah, I was going. Oh, I can't forget school days. You know, in school days, I was going. We call it our own burger. You no, know, when you don't have money to buy burger in restaurants, <laughs> you will cut the bread. You know, spread your ewa <laughs> to be your filling. So that's our own burger in schools. The university days, we call it burger. <laughs> All right, Banku and granite soup. Mm. I see Yamala Begiri. Oh, Banku. Ah, ah. Oh, nice, nice. I see that there's no one is even asking for foreign food. This is nice. Yes, we are true Africans. True, true Africans. Okay, true Africans. Ah, fried sweet potatoes and shito. Ah, shito. I've not, is this a Nigerian food? Wow. Okay, good. Banku across you with fried mosquito legs. Ah, mosquito legs. Please, how do you get mosquito legs to eat? <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay, this is nice. This is nice. Kente and fried. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Okay, so I'm happy that we are relaxed now. Caramel soup. Hmm, nice, nice. Okay, I should check my 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 speakers. Quite my loud. This is hundred percent. Okay, I can even hear myself echoing back. Okay, I see a goosey soup, spaghetti and egg. Um, I see this shito, uh, wache and shito. This should be a, another country. Okay, okay, good. Eban vegetables, nice, nice. Yes, we are all relaxed now. We are all relaxed. Yes, I welcome you again. Okay, to um this webinar and uh i appreciate you for taking out time your interest in in uh, being participating in this webinar because it means that uh you are um looking forward to impacting your students in the classroom so thank you thank you so much you are a special educator for being here for taking out this time being in this workshop you are special okay thank you thank you so much so uh, without further ado, let's let's get on. So, welcome everyone. So, let me just quickly do some quick introductions. Here, I have my uh, FET team, Rebecca. You're going to see Rebecca Vieira, which is the director of Global Initiative FET in Col uh, Colorado, Buda, uh, Boulder in the U.S. She's going to join us in the next workshop. That's next Saturday. You know, this is four Saturdays. So, please. You know, on the WhatsApp group, if you're not on the WhatsApp group, please make sure you are there. Uh, my colleague will share the WhatsApp group in the chat link, okay, in the chat box. So, um, Rebecca is going to join us next week, Saturday, where we touch on activity design, okay. Um, Zach also will join us. Zach is the first ambassador in Africa, all right, in Kenya. Please, can you stop annotating on the screen, all right? Uh, uh, Shola is here with me. Shola, please wave, say hi. And we see you, Shola. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Sorry, I was muted. Okay, Good no morning. problem. Excited, excited so, to be here. Shola is a first STEM specialist here in Nigeria. Okay, and I am Blessing Chukuka. I'm a first fellow and also the founder of DTW Tutorials. I'm going to share what DTW Tutorials um, is about in some few. Um, so here we have uh, uh, we have some fat fellows here with me. Uh, Godfrey, Godfrey, can you say hi? Can we see you, Godfrey? Can you unmute and say hi, please? Is he here? Yes, yeah, sure. Hi. Yeah, hi. Okay. So FET is also my uh Godfrey is my fellow FET fellow uh colleague. Okay. I'm gonna also be sharing with you what the FET fellowship is about. So it's uh we are here to try to impact Africa on the usage of STEM, uh STEM. Uh, FET simulation in STEM classes. These are digital simulations that can transform your class. I will show you um, the first workshop we did in July, which it's a WhatsApp group of about 700 uh, participants. Over um, of those percent, I think about 30 percent has finished think, the Coursera course. Florence, I'm going to answer your question. Okay. I'm going to um, come to you, so please be patient, okay? Be patient with us. We're going to answer all your questions, all right? We have two hours, and we're going to make do of those time of the time well. So, 
So it has been an impactful journey from workshop two. That's why I decided to do work, uh, workshop one. That's why I decided to do workshop two. So please I encourage you to stay with us. It's it's a, it's 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 work, but with us we support you through your journey. I'm going to show you how the uh, first uh, cohort did and all their testimonies. I'm going to show you that so you know that it is worth your time to engage in. All right. So briefly. Um, DTW Foundation, I found uh, the founder of DTW Foundation. So we're the creators of DTW Tutorials. It's an educational channel on YouTube. First of all, I started by preparing students for your WATSE, that's your WAEC, NECO GC, JAMPOS, UMEBC, and, um, and, and, uh, and Junior WAEC. So I started with that. But I saw that... Uh, these students had issues first. Okay, that's why they are coming. I see, I saw their questions. And that's that's why I had the passion to go into teacher training. Because if you can help the teacher with good tools, especially STEM teachers with good, uh, good tools to use in their classrooms, it will help the students to love STEM subjects well. So that's why I'm really putting so much effort in teacher training development. So we do all these videos for free. Please let us mute our microphone. So, you know, we have a very lovely uh, webinar. Let's mute. It's Don't unmute yourself because, you know, I've already set it to, um, when you come in, you're already muted. Don't unmute yourself, please. Mute, mute your microphone, please. Okay? So coming back. So I had been focusing on students, but I see that there's a gap in teacher training. And I've been assessing some wonderful tools that can help teachers in their classrooms to love FETs, to love um, STEM subjects like physics, chemistry, biology, and even mathematics. So that's why I'm taking our time here to help teachers know about these tools and use it in their classrooms. So this is what DTW tutorial the tutorials a foundation is about. All right, so we're here to help STEM teachers, STEM students, and also, um, you know, support education in Africa, okay? One of our team is what supporting STEM education, our team, our, our vision and goal is supporting STEM education in Africa. Okay, so this is, uh, this is what we are about, all right? So I welcome you once again. And do feel free, you can contact me. Oh, my name, sorry. My name is Blessing, um, Shewun Chukuka. So, you know, from the West, if you are in Nigeria, Shewun Chukuka from the West going to the East. So that is, that's my journey from a, a Yoruba lady getting married to an Igbo, <laughs> Igbo uh, wonderful husband. <laughs> we thank God for that. So, so this, that's me. So Blessing, Shewun Chukuka. So that's all uh or about me. If you need other information, you can also contact me. I'm the admin on the WhatsApp group you are in. Okay, so now our workshop objectives and expectations. Please listen carefully to this. This is quite important. Okay, so um, today we are on to introduction to first simulations. Um, so these are the objectives you learn how to embed share sims with others know everything about fed sim the next week we're going to treat activity design and fed simulations and uh where you're going to reflect on inquiry learning in math or science education you are going to uh, know how to de develop strategies for writing sim based inquiry activities for math and or science um, um subject classes okay and develop your own lesson plan and the third week, we're going to be looking at implementation, how to implement this in your classroom. After you've gotten your lesson plan, you've learned the pedagogy, how to go about, because it's, you know, active learning is quite different. It's all, it's all buttress on engaging the students. So there are ways, there are techniques that you can go about engaging your class in implementing your FET activities. So all this, we are going to be touching them. And we are going to, you know, this all all your learning is going to be on Coursera. Coursera is an educational app where courses are being you know curated. All right, so we are going to send an email to you, three emails after this meeting. 
That's why I, I want to buttress on this. Please, very important. Immediately after this meeting, maybe uh, because it takes a while before you get all the emails. By Sunday, immediately after this meeting, we're going to shoot the mails because there are over a thousand participants that have said, um, you know, indicated interest in this webinar. So we're going to send emails. So you shall, some of you might receive at night today or in the morning on Sunday. But you're going to be receiving three emails. Okay, my I think my, my screen is blocking the first one. Okay, the first email is introduction. The third email is activity design. The, the uh, uh, sorry, the second is activity design and the third is implementation. Please, it's very critical because the issue I had the issue we had in the first workshop is uh, people not joining the course from this email sent to them. That's why you should please give us the correct email. All right, give us your correct email address and name when registering. So you will receive these three emails. It is this email that you will use to join the course on Coursera. It is free. When you use these emails to join the course on Coursera, it is free of charge and you would get certificates from the University of Colorado Boulder, okay? So you will get all your certificates from the university. Once you join the course via this email sent to you, okay, it's going to be absolutely free. But if you don't join the course from here, you go directly to the Coursera website, you will be charged, I think about $69. So please, 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 that's why very important, I want to emphasize on this, be patient and wait for these three emails. Okay, if you're having difficulty, you don't, you didn't receive it, you can always um, drop, I'm going to, there'll be a, a time frame where I would open up um, the group for us to, you know, you know, put in your queries and I will, we would resolve them on the group. Okay, try as much as uh, possible. Whenever we open up the group, I'm going to tell, communicate that on the group. When we open up the group, uh, you will just, any queries you have on the course, we would answer you on the WhatsApp group. That's why it's important for you to join the group. So you will receive these three emails where you would directly join the course from. This is where all your assignments will be marked. Peer grading, everything will be marked. And when you finish on one course, you'll be issued a certificate. Please mute your microphone, Mr. David. Okay, and when you finish course one, introduction, a certificate to be issued. When you finish activity design, certificate from the University of Colorado Boulder will be issued. When you finish um, the course on implementation, another certificate will be, will be issued. And as you have completed the three courses, a final certificate which shows that you have completed the full course will be issued with, to you. And I tell you, this would skyrocket your career path, okay? There are several testimonies I would share with you, all right, of, of you know, uh, of the last workshop of STEM educators, really, really, all of them saying they will implement this in class. In the implementation phase, when they implemented it, there was a particular testimony of, um, she said she used her children to implement with the first simulations. They never knew anything about the subject and they were able to, she was able to achieve her goals. That's her lesson goals. And the students understand and grab the concept. So with FET, uh, there are so many things that you can, you know, um, try to put into your classroom that would call for active engagement. And even um, the least learner would benefit you know, the slow learner, whichever learner, the quiet learner, the one who's afraid, they will all benefit from the usage of FET simulation. Please, Ruth, stop annotating on the screen, okay? So please, very important, you would receive these three emails from us and this from this email, you will click and join. That is the only way you would avoid the payment, um, the payment of $69 on Coursera. So please, please, for each, each of the courses, do not click on any button on the Coursera app to join. Always come back. When you are done with introduction, you want to enter activity design, come back to the course to join. Don't join from Coursera. When you are done with activity design, come back again to your email to join. Okay, please, I'm emphasizing on this so you avoid so many issues. 
because that was a major issue from workshop one. Um, you know, this instruction is very, very important. All right. So um, thank you. I'm sorry I took so long, but it's very necessary because I know what I'm talking about. Please don't join from the Coursera app. Join from your emails. The emails will send to you. So the objective of today's section, which is introduction to FET simulation, by the end of this session, you'll be able to understand STEM and its relevance, appreciate the importance of edtech in the classroom for 21st century education, locate and interact with FET simulations, the edtech app, you can, you know, Shala is going to deal with that. Implement a FET simulation with your, with your students and find help and support using FET simulations. Now, we know that STEM is quite needed in Africa, okay, because Africa has 17% 70, 70, of the world's what, population. We have 17% of the world population. So we need STEM. And STEM drives economic performance. That's why you see us today, we are heavily, heavily dependent on importation. Almost everything, gadgets, phones, every single machinery that we can fabricate and make here, we import. So STEM is quite critical. Okay, and if you notice now, entertainment has driven a lot of even students that are interested in STEM away from STEM. Are you, are you getting me? So we also need to make STEM education entertaining so they know that it's, it's beneficial to the world around them. And that's where FET simulation comes in, okay? Because STEM fosters the growth of what economies, especially in Africa and anywhere, look at China, you see everything is technology STEM. In fact, there's even a policy in the edu edu education sector. Each child passing grade seven, grade eight, you should be so technical. Is it Germany? Germany, if a child comes back, maybe there's a fault in a, your plumbing system or the electrical system, and the child maybe is in high school, can't fix it. Uh, it it's a problem. They are all techie. They are all handy. Okay, because they know the need for it. So we also have to drive it. And to drive it, it all depends on us, STEM educators. We are the ones that can drive the love for STEM, the passion for STEM, into our students okay so why do we need to uh teach uh why do we need to teach our learn with technology now look at these two case scenario sorry one minute now let's look at these two case scenario why do we need to teach look at this first picture and look at this second picture. Can someone quickly, I just want one person to unmute. Which do you think is better? Let me see your hands raised. Which do you think is better? Anyone that wants to answer this? Just one person so we can quickly. Okay, um, I see John. John was the first person. John or Latunde, you can unmute and speak, please. John, you can unmute and speak. Okay, if you if you if you and um, if you can hear me, Kofi, Kofi, you can unmute and speak, please. So I I disable just a minute. I would need to um, okay I'll ask okay. on you. All right. Okay. So John is raising his hand. I'll just um everyone raising. So, so if you would like to speak, please yes. Raise your hand All right. Uh, Mr. Shola, good morning. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I can speak now. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Blessing. So um, you asked the question, which of these um, picture, which of these is better? Yeah. I think the first one is better. That's the one that is so obvious, where the children are engaging in the activity. And uh, the reason I prefer this, or I, I think this is better, is because the children are engaging in the learning process. Unlike the other one, where the teacher just stood, and then the teacher far from the board, and of course, it's not even fascinating enough to allow them engage or have an interest in what is being taught. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alatunde. I would allow one more person to speak. Um, can you, I think the next person is Ambrose. Shola, can you unmute Ambrose? Ambrose already has permission to. Ambrose, you can speak. speak. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I would have prefer the one with the technology because that one, whether the teacher is around or not around, there could be varieties the student will learn. But the other one with the board, 
if the teacher is not there, nothing is on the board, or what is on the board remains on the board throughout throughout life. Great, great one, Ambrose. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, don't worry, there'll be another chance to speak, please, for the rest of people that raise their hands. Okay, so you can see this. Almost all teachers will prefer this because this is active learning. This is a traditional method where there wasn't any technology available. Are you with me? But now we have so many technology available, okay, we, with our phones, mobile phones, several things available for us to make our classroom engaging, to have active learning in our classroom. Here, you can just see it is mo it's mostly the road uh, type of learning where the teacher comes, repeats, 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 students repeats, repeats, whether the student is getting it or not, he's speaking what you are saying, speaking what you are saying, and all that. It's not engaging with the material. It's not reinforcing uh, concept, the concept learning. Okay, him grabs it as in grab, you know, have a full grasp of what the teacher is actually trying to drive. Okay, there's nothing to hold, nothing tangible, nothing to connect with. All right, so this is a better way to teach right now in this 21st century. That's why we need technology to teach and learn. All right, so that's where third simulation comes in. All right, so third simulation. How did it start? What is FET? Okay, FET is, the acronym is Physics Education Technology. How did it start? Okay, it started when Carl Wehman, he won the Nobel Prize in physics in, 20, in 2001. So what this lovely man did, we had an opportunity to meet with him virtually, okay, during our FET fellowship. What he did was he used all those money and open up this foundation, okay? So that's, you know, Nobel Prize is about a million dollars and all that. So I, my, my questions, the questions we had for him on the group, were, that is it that you don't need this money. I know it's typical, even me, before before I put all the money in foundation, I would think of, <laughs> I would think of so many other things to do with the money. So he said that that's the passion he wants. He wants to touch the world. He wants um, science, to be engaging and to be fun for students. So that's how FET started, okay? In 20, 20, uh, 2002, he won the Nobel Prize 2001, and in 2002, he founded FET uh, uh, Simulation. It first started with physics, then there was a popular demand for it, want, you know, to grow more. They wanted more in maths, in chemistry, and it expanded to other subjects through funding. It's an NGO, so everything about the first simulation is free to use online. It's so free for anyone to access online, okay? So um, he expanded to other subjects, all right? So here, this is Carl Wayman here, and we appreciate him. It's, it's, a, it's, it's quite wonderful. So what are the goals of the first interactive simulation? Is to make STEM learning more engaging, all right? It will make it more engaging. It will make it more relevant. So you will see that these simulations connect to everyday life. It will make it accessible as easy as you can get it. Understandable, straight to the point in explaining key concepts in particular topics, okay? It's quite effective because it uses STEM practices. Professors of physics work on this simulation. I, I had the privilege of meeting um, the vice uh, uh, Dr. Kati, okay? She's a doctor of physics in the University of um, uh, Colorado Boulder. She's actually, she works on it. That is her job. She works on it before a simulation is even um, the software or programmers come out to design. She works on, on you know, the, the concept, how to drive the concept to make students understand and things to do. And you'll notice that the first simulation also makes, it's, it's personalized in the sense that students can easily go around it themselves. It encourages students agency. They can be on themselves and try to and try to understand a concept. Please let us mute our microphones. Okay. So these are the goals for, for the FET interactive simulation to make STEM more engaging, relevant, accessible, effective, and personalized. Okay. So FET interactive simulation makes learning STEM more like doing STEM. 
Okay, one thing choir teachers, uh, STEM educators um, try to ask, are you trying to take away laboratory uh, experiments from, from us? No, no, no. What the FET simulation does is it complements laboratory work. You will see some particular simulations where we are going to dive in and we show, you know, there'll be a breakout sections where, you know, there's a physics chemistry, maths, everyone go into a breakout uh, ses session and see several simulations of maths, chemistry, and physics and biology. Okay, so um, Shola, over to you. You have the floor for the talk. Okay, great. Thanks, Blessing. Let me stop sharing. No. Okay, great. Good morning, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be with us this morning as Blessing had earlier said. My name is Shola and of course colleagues with Blessing and together we we call teachers our best friend. I think we've, we've worked together over the past maybe four or five years or there about more like just supporting teachers to leverage technology in effective ways to get better at their craft and do more amazing stuff. So I'm always excited when that opportunity presents itself again. And today among other things we'll be talking about a tool, but not just the tool alone. Over the course of this engagement, you are also going to learn effective methods that would enable you effective, if effectively use a tool. For example, if you have a knife and you open it, use it to open tomato tins, like it works, but you might you might have a tool and not know how to make the best use of them. So the tools are powerful, but also level, understanding how to effectively use them also enables you get the best result out of it and then improve the quality and the experience both you and your students have in your classroom. So we welcome you to be patient with us over the next three to four weeks as we take you through that journey. So today I'm going to take you through an exploration of the website, how to find the tool, um, how to find the one that applies to your lesson, and also maybe your teachers, how to find and use them offline if there is no internet. And we'll just talk about that over the next say, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And then after this, person will continue that journey to helping you create activities um, after you know how to find them, but also what strategies or what methodologies will ensure that you get the best result out of them in your classroom. So I'm going to share my screen now, if that is fine. And um, I'm also going to post the link in the chat for those who are trying to follow on. Again, remember this session is very hands-on. So if you're on your PC in particular, I invite you to visit the link that I'm posting into, that I just posted in the chat. It's, it's the FET website, phet.colorado.edu, phet.colorado.edu. And um, once you go to that site, this is what you find. You find the website, it says interactive simulation for maths and science. You can click on the button just beneath that shows explore simulation and it'll take you to all of the simulations that are available. But we'll just go through the first page quickly so you can see there are over 101 simulations already delivered. It means people have accessed these resources over 100, over a billion times online only. So there is an equal amount of access offline that is not tracked using this number. You'd also find that the resources are available for physics, chemistry, maths, earth science, and biology. There are a ton of teach teaching resources, so activities for teachers, strategies, and training, which you will continue to learn about, and the community, one of which you're already part of. So we encourage that you stay, stick with it so that the journey is easy and you can also get support when you need them. There are currently 164 such, such resources. Um, you learn about them. One of them can teach an array of topics and concepts. Some of them can teach multiple topics that you have, but 164 of them have been created and you learn more about them. It's available in 121 languages, which includes Igbo, Aousa, Yoruba, and a couple of more um, African countries, depending on where we are co um, connecting from and teacher submitted lessons. So it's also possible that you create lessons that you use in your class and make them available for other teachers so that we can reduce that time. If you've created uh, like a model or an amazing activity, all teachers who are teaching your same level or class would need the same. So 
you can make available on the website. So teachers do not need to spend that time recreating again. And you can also explore and see what has been created that you can find useful in your classroom. So this is what the page looks like. So I'm going to go on and go to the top. Same thing, if I click on Explore Stream and come, or come to Simulation and click on All Simulations, you can then find a list of 161 scenes, but you'll notice that this has 106. I would explain that further down the line. So I think I should just address that now. 106 of them have already been written in a way that makes it easy for you to use them on mobile phones, tablets, and computers. Before now, they used to be, I would say, exclusively accessible on computers alone, where you have to use Flash and a lot of other old technology that is currently being abandoned for more accessible tools that makes it accessible across websites. So at the moment, 106 of them have been translated or have been redesigned to work on phones, tablets, and any digital device that you have. A few others are still work in progress and increasingly, while more simulations are being designed, more are also being converted and being made available. So this is what it looks like. I can, If you look at the navigation or the options to the left, you can see you can sort by subject, you can click and then find, these are the set physics related simulations. These are the biology, earth science and chemistry related simulations. You can click and then sort by grade level, math, middle, elementary, high school and university. You can also choose compatibility, which you really do not need, but this is what I mentioned. Old technology, if I, if I click on flash, and Java, you'd notice that it's now at 167. Flash and Java is not recommended anymore. Like most computers would complain when we use them. So while the scenes are still available, um, but while a couple of the scenes are still available, you might struggle with installing them. But like I mentioned, efforts have been made to make them available in HTML5 so that you can use them on any device that you own. The sim also provides features for students with special abilities. So things like alternative input so that they can they can interact basically and um, they don't need the mouse to basically um provide input into the simulation. Um in many cases it voices um students can listen to the interaction that is taking place. So if, if you have such students or you know teachers who teach students in that category, there are lots of features that have been built into it to support that as well and finally on this menu is what i mentioned about languages so if you click on locale i can click on english which is the default i can scroll further down and then find resources in if i click on yoruba i'll see all of the themes about 102 of them have already been translated into yoruba if i click on Aousa, I'll find same as well. The resources are also available. Just think of learners who are in remote places, of, of course, who English is not their first language. They can easily still leverage their first language or language they're most comfortable with in. And then that should not be a barrier to their learning or in this age and time, learning effectively or of course, building good lives for themselves. Before I click on anyone, I also want to quickly show us how to use them offline. Then we'll just explore one or two things before I hand control back to blessing. So um, I've shown you where to find. Once you visit the website, you can click on simulations and you can click on all scenes and choose all scenes and you have the liberty to choose the subject or the topics that you want to teach. But if you go to the end of the page, I know I have clicked on offline access. So sorry, I clicked. There's a menu at the lower part of the screen where you see offline access. So once you click on the page, it, it gives you the option to use the simulations offline. So you have the opportunity to download the Windows app or Mac OS app based on your, the device you use. So if you use Windows computers, which is popular in schools, you click on Windows app, it downloads and saves on your computer and you can have access to it, all of the simulations at no cost on your computers. If you use a Mac OS, same thing, you click. You also have the option, if you don't want to download all you don't need all of the sim, you only want physics simulation, or you just need a particular class and you want to download just to that one, or you're trying to manage the internet connectivity or the speed is not really great. It's take a lot of time to download the whole thing. 
You can also download them as individuals by clicking this down facing arrow on the simulation page. I'll show you that part again. So once you click on the sim, I'll show you where this purple down facing arrow is for you to download. So if you don't want to download the whole thing, you can just download one and download another one when you need them and just grow the collection you have over time. I mentioned that the sims are now available on across devices, whether it's on a computer or a tablet, if you have them in schools or mobile phones. So you also have the option to go to the popular Play Store, Google Play Store or um, the iOS App Store to click and download them. Um, so there's a caveat there. If you go to the Google Play Store, it means you can use them offline, but the mobile app will charge you I think about $300, 300 naira, not dollars, sorry. So that's about 99 cents in US. That's the lowest you can charge. And that basically helps maintain the development of the mobile app. But if you do not download it, you can go to the browser on your phone, go to the website and use them as equal as, as, as it is. But it means if you go that route, you need to be you need to be connected to the internet to access the page and then access the scene. Once you open it and you connect, you, you turn off your data, you can continue to use the SIM without internet. But that first time access, you need to be connected to the internet. But the mobile phone allows you to launch and use on your on your phones at no, as in without any dependence whatsoever on, on, on the internet. And it costs, I can just check around, around it might be changed now, but it's 99 cents. And that's around the last I checked, around 300 and something, 300 and something naira to get that done. So I put that aside now. I thought that was very important considering the context that we teach. Yes, there's something for primary school students as well. So I'll just show a quick demo. So all sims again, remember all sims, I can find all of the simulations and based on the grade level that you teach, you can come to mathematics. I'll, I'll show something for maths for younger kids. And I'll show something for older kids as well, which so while and this is a very important point. This is fractions for younger kids. And there's something called for, um, I'm looking for number play now, just a quick one. Yes, number play. And that's the Just quickly go to gravity and orbit. So this is, once you open the scene page, remember what I did was come to simulation, select a scene, select a scene, and then it opens just like this. You can find information around, of course, images around what it looks like, the topic it supports. So this simulation supports fractions, equivalent fractions, improper fractions, number lines, and all of that. You can find sample learning goals if you're developing your lessons and then curriculum alignment. Usually this is more international. On the same page, you can also find teaching resources. And this is particularly important. In some cases, some of it has been aligned to the curriculum. But there's this document that is exclusively for teachers. You'd see that it, is, it says sign in to view. If you're not signing, you will not be able to view it because we don't expect students to view it. So this is, while it is not mandatory to create an account, it is one of the reasons why you should create an account. I would click on it and sign in now because I have an existing account. And I will be able to view that document that was saying sign in to view. I can now see the controls that explains what each of the objects is. Information for suggested use. Some of the questions you can ask students. And some additions, you can, you can change certain things in terms of how the scene looks, and that's more for super users. So this document basically provides all of that information, and I invite you to check, try it out and check. So you can find teacher tips, like we call it. In many cases, you'll also find videos that explain how the scene works. Activities, just like I mentioned, that you can use directly in your classroom. You can sort them by language, basically what other teachers have created. You can also explore and see if you can use them in your class. And a couple of others, like I mentioned, translations into other languages. You can click on the down facing arrow that I showed you earlier on to download for that particular language or for that particular locale and use in your classroom and then credits. 
So once you download the scene, you click on this down facing arrow and it then moves you forward. Um, it, it saves and you can use it offline on your computer in your school. So I'll show these three scenes. I know, I know I've shot my time. I'll show these three scenes. Um, we'll take questions perhaps once, once Blessing has time for that. And um, if you have questions, you can also feel free to write in the chat while we're going through it. Remember, I clicked on the first scene. You click on the, arrow, the, the play button at the top of the screen. It opens up the scene. Most scenes are scaffolded. So it starts with something very easy and then with increasing difficulty, you have other, other pages or other screens, like we call it. And in some cases, you have a lab or a game. So here is something that teaches fraction. You can then see the numerator. If I increase the numerator, what is happening? It fills up the space. If I increase the denominator, it is just dividing without filling up. So students can begin to make sense of, of course, concept around fractions. If I, if I numer what numerator does or the effect numerator, the numerator has on it, in, in effect the denominator ha has on it. But also there's also multiple representations. So you can use um, a circle and divide it this way, or you can use a rectangle, or you can use like a, a, a vertical um, line, whatever that is, or a cylinder basically has the same effect. So students can basically start seeing what that is and just begin to make sense of what is happening. For kids who are foodies like myself, you can also use a cake like, and create questions around that. What happens if I divide a cake between five kids? Those type of um, problem, what do, they, what do they call those type of questions? And this can all help, just help students um, structure their thoughts and then know how to navigate and arrive at the answer. And this is a number line as well to just begin to understand what is happening. You can also add multiple objects in there. If you just want one cake, you can add multiple cakes and students can then, of course, you can use that to increase the numerator and denominator you have. So it's just endless. And all of this is built in a way for, that allows you create questions for your students. So if it's just an elementary level student, of course, one cake is fine. But if you're going, the higher you go, you can then start create more questions that'll be a bit more difficult and, and, and you challenge them to do even more stuff. This is exclusively for younger kids because it introduces numbers at the very, yeah, no, what problems, thank you, at the very elementary level. So students can drag one and then see the representation as well. They can see how it is written in text and then just see the, this, this number, this 10 frame to then count what that looks like. They can click the play button. If you can hear my sound, it also reads the word out. I can drag another one and I can see it's two dogs. I can change the object for boys who like dogs. So this also allows for some personalized learning. I can use the butterfly, I can use apple. So anything that the kids find interesting, but it does not stop there. I can see this is three, I have three numbers. I can see three objects. I can then begin to stack. I can see that one and one and one is three. I can see one, Two and one is equal is, is equally three. So the object did not change, even though the number composition has changed. So it's then how to teach us to help students explore and begin to make sense of all of that. It can go as far and then say it is two plus two plus one is three. I can break it down again and it becomes two plus one plus one plus one is still five. And basically all the questions, the alpha you can go is down to you as teachers. And um, how far your students, you can, how, how much you can you want to challenge them. There's a game as well for students to find fun. You can see this is seven, click on the number, they get a smiley face, and they then go on to the next one. This is two. So there's endless possibilities, and all of this is available at no cost. The last one I'm going to show quickly. I'm so sorry, blessing. I know I've shot my time. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Shall I? It's very important what you're doing because a lot of people are asking questions. It's important. Okay, great. Okay. So the last one is also for more advanced learners. So in this case, this is more gravity and lobby. It's even in developed countries where it's expensive, except you are maybe Elon Musk's son that you can afford to get on SpaceX and go to, to the moon or the sun. This basically kind of simulates, I can choose the path, how the Earth orbits the sun you can ask questions around, oh, how many days? Why, why, do, why do we have 365 days in a year? We know it's the amount, the, the, the time it takes for the Earth to go in perfect, in, in full circle around the sun. But this can just 
create interesting questions and drive discovery with your students that you've not even planned. And this just helps provide that guardrail for students to learn. But it's, it does not end there. They can see how the Earth's moon moves around the Earth in comparison to the sun. And they can, of course, zoom in and zoom out and just begin to make sense of all that is happening. This can just be a demonstration tool for any learners who perhaps do not understand what is happening. But for older learners who either want to see, we understand there's a gravitational balance in space. Everything stays in one place. And of course, as, really, as Christians or as people of faith, we say there's a power that holds them. But science will say there's gravity, that there's gravitational balance that keeps things in place because everything is in, is in stability. And even though things move around, it's perfect of it. Nothing has disrupted it in a while. But what can disrupt that? There's a balance between the velocity at which things move and as well as the mass. If we increase the mass of the sun, how does that affect how the Earth moves around? We can see the pull it has on its head, on the Earth changes. So the size of the sun has not changed. So for students who need to explore, maybe in geography or astronomy, they can begin to explore that. They can increase the mass of the Earth or increase the mass of the sun. And you can just ask questions around that. And it's you can kind of definitely you can tell the you can tell the earth to stay in one place and you can observe what is happening. If for, for those who want to time travel or just tell everything to stand in the place. So they, like the opportunities are endless. You can you can pause and then they can investigate what is happening. They can see the, the velocity and gravitational balance between all of the bodies in terms of what, what the velocity, how is it moving, the duration at which it moves. But for younger learners who do not need to change the, the size and mass. They can just it can serve as a demonstration so here is how the satellite moves around the earth like if you're talking about the internet we talk about gps how does how does how does google google map know where things are um how do we take pictures and see all of those and these are some of the ways you can actually explain those technologies for lower kids so the same tool can be used for kids as old as the university but can also be used for kids as as young as prim early primary to just begin to make sense. So the questions you ask as teachers is one that is what then sets the students on that part of discovery or inquiry that they then discover and learn in that process. So same thing, um, satellite around the earth as well, just, just different scale. Oh, this is the moon. So here is the sun, the moon. I'll just reset the whole thing. I think I've disrupted the balance in a bit, which you can't do in the normal world. Because we we'll all won't be here anymore if we try to if we try to do that. Um, choose the path. Um, you can see all of that. This is just the the sun and the moon, and this is the earth and the sun. This is the earth, the moon, and the sun. And you can then just zoom in and see how the moon goes around the earth, and then how satellites moves around the earth as well. So like endless possibilities in terms of questions you can ask. And how far you want to go is dependent on what you are interested in, not, not the tools and the resources that are available. Because most of the barriers we often face as teachers in the class in terms of not all of them, most of them as in, increasingly have been eliminated. And um, like it's, it's available for use offline. It's available in multiple languages. Um, it comes at no cost. Maybe technology, even technology based on the use case you have in your, in, in your, in your context, you can use it. And those are the things would learn over the coming week. You can use it when you just have a single device. You can use it when you have multiple devices. It can it can serve as a pre-lab where students do it perhaps with their with their with their with the devices of their parents at home or you teach and you then give them some take home to explore and then come back to you with what they find out. So I'm going to take a pause here. I thank you for listening. If you have questions please feel free to write in the chat and um, we'll be listening and then answering the questions along the way. Over to you blessing. Okay thank you so much Shola. Thank you for that presentation. Uh, just to add to, I see a lot from the questions I've been getting. Okay, especially when the visual is required. Oh, yes. Okay. So I see a lot of questions uh, in the chat box. So I'm going to try to, you know, people say, are there for chemistry? Are there for physics? This is simulations for physics, 54 results. You can see this on density, on um, circuit construction, Fourier, Collision lab, um, energy spark, uh, park skates. Okay, there's uh, you can see this for matters, uh, energy forms, masses and spring diffusion, gas properties, Coulomb's law. In explaining Coulomb's law, 
you know, um, state of matter, projectile, you know. Uh, so particular, this seems, the ones, definitely more sims are still in production, but, you know, uh, from um, research and from data, the particular concepts are quite, you know, tricky for kids to grab, okay, are here. Okay, you can see, you can use this. You can use one sim to teach, uh, to achieve several of your ob objectives in a particular uh, topic. So there are several. I didn't do. Please, can you mute your microphone? <laughs> Shala, please, can you help me with the microphone? Yeah. Okay, so these are the build and nucleus. These are for physics. Okay, and uh, for chemistry, I see someone asking for chemistry. This is chemistry, gas properties, uh, molars, atomic, Rutherford, isotopes, molecules, reactance product, balancing chemical equation, pH scale, wave on the stream, acid and base concentration. They are here. Okay, and uh, for maths, I see my maths people, you know, uh, where vector addition. You have graphs, quadratic uh, graphing, fractions, several things, area model. We have them all here. Even for probability, we have the function. We have them all here. So all you need to do is go to the website, fet.color. Even for uh, biology, we have some biology sims here. So all you need to do is go to fet.colorado.edu. And it's always advisable as teachers to please um register hold on okay i want to quickly um share something because there will be some you know what shall i share there are some things that you won't be able to assess if you are not signed in if you haven't registered so all you need to do is immediately after this particular uh, program kindly go to the fed.colorado.edu click here this um you know this little icon which here okay and you read, you try, you call me, I need an account, you register. Okay. And, you know, you fill in all the details. Yes, I am a teacher. I verify. There's something I want to quickly show you. Okay. Uh, your primary email address. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry, please, Motorayo, please mute your microphone. Please, please. Okay. Let's see. Do you hear? I, I bless him. So sorry. To, can, do you mind also um, making um, the Rita and Godfrey calls? I, I don't have that right. Thank you. Okay. 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 Just a minute. Mm. Godfrey is a co-host. Godfrey, can you make... Hold on. No, he's not. I think he might have dropped off and he's back on the call. Okay. Rita is here. Okay. Let me quickly do that. Make calls. Okay. I've done that. Let me check if Godfrey is back. Hello, Rita. Welcome. Hi, Rita. Good, uh, good morning. Beginning. Uh, Go on. Morning. You're doing great. Okay. Thank Hi. you, Rita. Okay. So um, here, primary email address. So you put your password. There's something I'm trying to get. Mm, so there will be a particular place where it says school. Just type in yeah. something. You get so there's something I really want to emphasize there. Where it says type in the name of your school. Okay, let me go next. So it's, it's important. Oh, it's not going to allow me to leave here. Okay, let me just do this. So I go here, copy. Okay. Be patient with me. There's something very important. I think I have to do this properly. Hold on. Um, so it means, let me not use this email. Let me use this. Okay. Because I'm registered with my Chukuka already. So let me suggest, can this thing suggest for me? Suggest. Mm. 
Google. Yeah, address has been registered. Okay, I've used this email. Let me use something else. Okay. Please, a minute. Something very important. I have to. Uh -huh. Okay, so you pick your courses. All right, the grade, your teaching experiment. Oh, Shola? Aha, can't find school. So there's a place for you to put the name of your school. So because, you know, it's a U.S. Uh, product, um, so it might not cover the schools in Nigeria. So just come here, click on can't find school, because a lot of people um, encounter this problem when they try to register. Um, Rita, please, can you help me um, mute people? Okay, so a lot of people have issues here. They um, come back to me and say they can't find their school. So come here, can't find school, and just type in the name of your school. Let's say DTW Tutorials or DTW Academy. All right, the city, country. All right, if there's a website, fine, and add your school to the dat database. So that is how you register on the site. So please do make sure you do register on the third site immediately after this webinar, because it's going to help you in your transition, all right, to get SIMs. You know, when you click, for instance, if I click on this SIM uh, density, if I want to assess the teaching resources, it will lock it. Okay, it's going to be locked. You have to be signed in. So I have to come here and sign in. So, because I'm already signed in on my, on my browser. Before you can, maybe later, before you can then assess this document. So if I come here, come back here. Okay, so it's here. So I can now read everything about this simulation. So every resource that you need to understand the simulation, even how to use it in teaching is here. So everything about the simulation is explained here what it does when you move it because you know this is for this is for you it's your teacher tips okay if you want these are activities of of people that have used it in other countries all right in other schools to teach some particular subject so you have all this here so you click on it it takes you all the sheets that the person has used you can download and reuse you know edit and reuse to your own specific goal, okay? Your level and what you want to teach. So I just want to uh, buttress on that. So thank you, thank you uh, for staying, for listening to me. So now I'm going to give the, uh, Godfrey, are you here now? Godfrey? Yes, sure, I am here. Okay, yes, Godfrey from Kenya is a FED fellow from Kenya. He's going to take us on the benefits of FED simulation. So I'll stop sharing. You can share now and continue. Godfrey, please, just uh, 15 minutes. Okay, please. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes. Godfrey, you are muted. We, we can't hear you now. You're muted. Oh, thank you, thank you. Now, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay, thank you, thank you. So uh, I was talking about how Shola has shared much about the FET and even the way the screens uh, function. Now, I'm going to cover benefits of FET. So the first one, which I'm going to look at, is the interactive nature of uh, the simulations. So they foster visual 
dynamic learning of science concept. So the second one is uh, the cognitive. So simulations are scaffolded in such a way that the learning takes place in bits. So not everything can be covered at the same time. So each screen has its own uh, goals and objectives. So a teacher can just decide to pick a certain screen and teach a specific concept. So the student's learning is cascaded such a way that uh, not everything can be covered at the same time. So the teacher has also a freedom of choosing just one screen to cover the same, same concept they wanted to cover. So next is the self-assessment. So the learners are able to assess themselves and also to know how far they have learned and also redo what uh, maybe they are, were not able to get from the sim. So the sims help to reinforce learning so the students are able to learn at their own pace without being guided. So learners feel learning can take place. As, as in, a teacher can even decide to give learners an assignment which the learners can do at their own, maybe at home or during their own free time without being guided. So guiding is not that much needed because the, the way the sims are constructed, learners are able to self-guide themselves. So evidence of increased learning. So it has been uh, found that when the learners use the sim, the rate at which they got uh, correct uh, concepts was higher than when they only used the physical experiment, the physical apparatus in the lab. So therefore, it is encouraged so that learners, the, the teachers can help the learners to be able to use the sim and also maybe incorporate learning through sim and the physical uh, laboratory experiment. So when you infuse the two, the rate of uh, conceptual understanding that learners will have will be higher. So there is also this question, a greater percentage of students answer conceptual questions correctly when a sim is used uh, compared to when uh, only the physical apparatus are used. So therefore, again, we encourage teachers to infuse the use of sim to teach concepts which uh, learners find difficult, especially the abstract concepts and also concepts where hands-on activities are, are more needed also. So there was also uh, part of a research done where students were exploring a chemistry on polarity. So the rate at which the learners were able to get it was more. Was more. So there is an open play. So when you allow the students to do an open play for about five and 10 minutes, and that is uh, also free play. So the rate at which the learners will understand the concept is higher than when you just decide to go deeper into the concept without allowing the students to interact with the simulation. So also we've seen that uh, there was renewed learning where sims are not used. So the traditional method of, of teaching where it was only a uh, teacher-based has now been phased out we now go into the, the, the student-based learning, students-based learning, which uh, is uh, learner-centered, inquiry-based, and has produced much. Now, the sim lessons encourage exploration. The students are able to invent different strategies. The students are also able to share ideas and uh, also learn the 21st century uh, skills like collaboration, problem solving, digital literacy, communication. There's lessons where the themes are not used. We only have maybe cramming, recalling facts, and uh, the teacher is the owner of knowledge. The students are not allowed. So the students they are treat the teacher as the owner of knowledge. When the teacher is not there, which means that learning cannot take place. So therefore we are encouraged to use themes to make students construct their own learning and also guide their own learning. So the themes are flexible. You can use them, uh, a student can use them individually. A student can, students, the teacher can also guide the students to use them as a group. 
also you can use them in distance learning maybe embed them in google classroom that is the virtual learning environment the way we are going to do it in uh, coursera so therefore learning can take place uh, in any environment even areas where the teachers are not there the students can also be guided to go through the concepts the same same way as other students who have their apparatus and everything so shola has also shown us how to access the simulation without an internet connection and that is the offline access system which you will download and put in your laptop the sim was designed to have different parts so therefore the teacher can able to scaffold so we have different windows we have introduction we have the basics we have the deeper learning the concept so the teacher can start with the introduction part then the learning is scaffolded into different stages according to the level of the learners who are present in class at that moment so the sim supports multiple learning goals with the content representation relationships the processes like exploration question and answer the design prediction data collection and also learners are also able to show evidence so the way i've said the soft skills like collaboration problem solving are encouraged and also the hard skills like lab techniques quantitative problem solving are also uh, elaborated so the teacher can decide to make the students go through all these skills so they let us make our classes more enjoyable more understandable more relevant let us put smiles to our students so that at least the stem lesson the stem classes should not be boring but uh, very very enjoyable so the learners are able to go through this without uh, difficulty so the sims the way i've said they have different stages we have introduction so the different topics are covered within one sim so it's the teacher's task to choose which concept you want to teach and at what stage do you want to teach this concept so that learning can take place uh, effectively so the teacher can decide to use clicker questions maybe an activity in the class or the teacher can assign a homework to the students do uh, during their own free time or at home now mostly using the simulations we are not removing the teacher from the picture but the teacher is part of the learning the teaching and learning activities the teaching and learning process so therefore the teacher can come in and develop an activity sheet the activity sheet is given to the students so the students are able to go through the simulation without uh, difficulty so let us incorporate these three parts the first sim the activity design where there will be an activity sheet that also you guys teachers will be able to design one and implement in your own classes so the teacher is the main facilitator of knowledge and the teacher is the guide so that uh, the learning of uh, the science concept can take place effectively so thank you so much let me give uh, the platform back to blessing thank you blessing welcome back Hello, Blessing. Shola. Hello. Okay, got yes, you. Yes, yes. Oh. Are you here yeah, now? Welcome back. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, Rita, Rita, thank you so much. Yeah, sorry. My internet, because uh, it's raining here. Um, <clears throat> okay, so thank you. Thank you so much, Godfrey, for sharing with us the benefits of of uh, the FED simulation. Godfrey shared, uh, you know, several research work that has been done, you know, putting the students with the FED simulation and letting them do um, a laboratory work. And uh, it was found out that the students who use um, the first simulation first before going hands-on with the physical um, equipment were able to fix a circuit even without the teacher's 
um, inputs. Are you with me? But those who were just given the, uh, you know, the materials and try and let them fix the circuit themselves were not able to. They found so many difficulties. So that's where we see the benefit of using FET for it complements uh, teaching in classroom. Okay, so now I'm quickly going to take you because we don't have much time. So I might quickly run through, uh, you know, the FET uh, pedagogy quickly. All right, but in the Coursera course, there's an in-depth uh, videos and resources that you will read that would explain more. Okay, it's very, very interactive. Okay, the Coursera course. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, so in teaching uh, with FET simulations, we use, um, there are some FET pedagogies we use in teaching. Okay, and we know that Right now, all right, it is more on, you know, where the FET, FET uh, pedagogy comes to balance out the more teacher controlled and the more student control. So it's in the middle and it balances, it brings this together, okay, where it helps um, teachers to move from less of teacher control to a bit of student engagement, active learning. From the beginning, we saw two pictures where we compared and most teachers here um, identified with using um, technology, making it more active. So that's where the third pedagogy comes in, where we have um, the whole class inquiry, which uh, Godfrey has, has um, spoken on that. I'm going to buttress on it uh, in a bit more. Okay, we have interactive lecture demonstrations. This is a pedagogy you can use depending on whichever resources you have. So, you know, FET um, puts in mind that some schools, some teachers would lack devices. Okay, so what particular method can they use in teaching using FET? What pedagogy can they use? So, I'm quickly going to go through all this now. Please can, uh, this is Nemo, Nemo, Nemo uh, Talabi or Talabi. Please, can you stop annotating on the screen? Okay, Rita, please, can you help me clear the screen? Please. So quickly, I want us to, uh, I was supposed to, uh, Godfrey, can you help me share the simulation to this um, um, energy forms on the, on the group? So for two minutes, we are going to go into this simulation. Hold on. Let me leave here. Let me escape. For two minutes, let me paste this in the in the chat box. For two minutes, somebody somebody asked me if you can use the first simulation on your phone. Okay. So yeah, this is this is this is now that you try that you can use it on your phone. Okay, so let me quickly share this in the chat box. I want us to quickly click on this link and go to this simulation. It's going to take you directly to this simulation. Can we see if you if if you if you have seen the link? Can you can I see a high five? Can I see your hands? Or just give me a thumbs up in the chat box. Raise hands, thumbs up in the chat box. You okay? Quickly go into this simulation. I'm going to give you four minutes to play with it. Use your phone, your tablet, your laptop, whichever. The first simulation works every on every device. That's the uh, most beautiful thing about this. So I'm going to give you three minutes. Three minutes will be okay. All right. I'm going to give you three minutes. It says I enter the name of my school. It's taking me. Okay. I would, if you're on the group, I would address registration. Okay. I'm, I'm going to address it on the WhatsApp group. So please, for now, let us go into this simulation. Click on the simulation and tell me what you wonder. Are we in the simulation? If you are in the simulation, let me see a clap hand. You're in the simulation. Let me see this, the emoji for clap. You clap, a clap, a clap. 
you are in the simulation playing oh good 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 using your phones well good 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 aliu muhammad good okay good 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 okay i should send the link again okay i would send the link again all right i hope everyone has the link okay so for four minutes let's play with the simulation tell me what you wonder Okay, so when it takes you here, you click on play and you go to, you go here, you go to systems, not the intro. You click on systems. You go here. This is where you should be. All right. And in two minutes, play around the same. Tell me what you wonder, what you observe about the simulation, what you can teach as a teacher. Okay. Just quickly, and maybe two people will speak. Okay, you can also drop on the chat box what you observe. You know, tell me what you observe, when you touch this, what happens? Let me see, let me see your, you know, you can drop on the chat box. If you're finished playing around with the simulation, please drop in the chat box. Energy conversion, I see. Coffrey says uh, energy conversion. Uh, Matthew says hydro source of power. Okay. Just one more minute for others to, you know, explore and play around. Mine is not, it's just a play. Play around it. Click it. Did you click on, on um, systems? Did you follow the link? It should play. You can't hear. Check your settings. Um, Said says I can deduce energy transformation. Good. Um, Olawele says um, source of heat. No, no, it's not a video. It's it's like an HTML um, interactive page. Okay, conversion of energy. You can click things and it's work. Okay, you see that you can play around. You know, I don't want to do that for you. All right, because it's a, it's it's a, it's part of the pedagogy when you are teaching. Okay, you let students play. There's a what we call open play. Okay, you don't tell them, oh, you do um, touch this particular button to do this. No, they should explore. There's an open play exploration, which they should do before you start giving uh, your further instruction. Energy conversion, good, the law that makes, okay, good. Okay, so our time is up. So I need just two people to speak on this. Can you raise your hands quickly? Two people. Two people that can speak on what they wonder, what they observe. Okay, uh, Samuel, can you speak? You can unmute somewhere. You can quickly speak. Somewhere and uh, Anabumu, Anabamu, can you speak? I think uh, um, um, Rita, please can you help me unmute them? Sorry, who is on me? Um, Samuel, can you? Can you unmute? Yeah. Uh -huh, unmute. Speak. Okay. Yes. Um, um, yes. Good afternoon. I I came late, so I I just joined. I just joined, so um, I I met um the place where you asked us to click on the link. I'm I'm still trying to <laughs> get the whole concept of the whole thing. I've not really got it because oh, I okay. I came. Back Oh, okay. I thought you wanted to speak on on the simulation. Okay, that's no problem. Okay, um, Michael, Michael, you can unmute and speak. Please say something on the simulation. Yeah. Yes, yes. I used that simulation, and I really enjoyed what I saw there. It's fascinating. No student will see this, and you don't need to explain too much anymore. The energy conversion from mechanical to heat energy, 
from uh, solar to it from this you don't need to explain too much just for them to press the button just just to move the slide and see how it works so with that after they have seen the concept how it works you just need to tell them so this is why we have this law this is why we say this this is why we say that okay energy can transform from one form to another with that it's very simple you are done with your class and you give them the exercises to do and that's all so it's very oh. fine i'm happy that i joined this uh workshop oh, oh okay thank you thank you so much mr michael thank you okay um so going on so we can see how interactive this uh, simulation is okay please can you stop uh, annotating on the screen please who is this please can you stop uh, writing on the screen we can all see it uh rita can you help me clear the annotation on the screen please Oh my God, this is... Uh, can you help me out, please? Yeah, yes, yes, go on, just go on. Okay, so, yeah, so the first pedagogy is the whole class inquiry. Where do we use the whole class inquiry? It is when, you know, in your classes, in your schools, you don't have enough devices for students. Um, there are no laptops, there are no um, tablets for your students to use. So, but what the school has is just one projector or maybe one TV screen that you as a teacher can connect your laptop to. So you use this strategy in trying to introduce topics to um, using FED simulation. So a teacher can use the strategy to introduce a topic and help the students broadly understand a natural or mathematical word uh, system, okay? So during the whole class inquiry, the teacher is responsible for guiding the conversation between uh, the flow of, uh, between the students and engaging the whole class. So you tend to ask like open-ended question. You try to look for um, cause and effect relationship in what you want to teach. For example, um, you know, if you have like a simulation like this, a physics simulation of how to construct a circuit, uh, you know, um, circuit construction DC, you can ask the students, what do you think the blue dot represents? A lot of them will speak. A lot of them will say, oh, it's electricity. Is it's, let me quickly go there. A lot of people say, oh, it's electricity. It's, uh, it's current. It is, it is voltage. It's, uh, let me try to look for the DC. So we, we do one hands-on, okay? It's uh, uh, current, it's voltage, it's something flowing. So you ask open-ended questions that can help them what, understand and drive, drive discussion between um, you and the students and to help them understand the concept where you are driving at. Like this now, you can easily construct a circuit. Okay, you put your light bulb here for physics teachers, math teachers, don't worry, when we go into the breakout sessions very soon, you would see, um, okay, you click here and the bulb comes on. You have drawn, you have, you, you have actually constructed a simple circuit. With this, you can construct even a parallel circuit, a series circuit. And you ask them, oh, uh, what do you, if I put another bulb here, what do you think will happen to the brightness of the first bulb? And a lot of people would, would say, oh, it will go brighter, it will go lower. You know, it tends, you know, you, you are trying to explain, you know, at, by asking them these questions, you are explaining some concepts that when you have a series circuit, what happens to voltage? Something happens to voltage. It's what reduces. The brightness of the bulb reduces. Then you can also ask, try to connect it to even a real day life activity, a connection in a, in a uh, basic home. You ask them, what do you think? How do you think the wires in our houses are connected? You ask, you can ask, do you think the bulbs in our houses are connected um, um, in a series connection? Most of them, will, will, you know, it will make them think. It will spark their curiosity and go back home. Huh? But the bulb in my house, the lights are constant too. There's no, there's no low here. There's no, when I put on another bulb, no other bulb go, gets low. So which, which particular connection is this? That's when you can now introduce parallel connection, a parallel connection. And you can use this with the word simulation by drawing a parallel connection here. Okay, keeping this, I, you know, because of time, I won't be able to, but you can go around and, um, on your own, play with the simulation, and they will see that when in a parallel connection, the voltage is constant in the entire building. So in a building, every connection is what? Parallel. 
So you can see you have driven home your points for students that don't understand what is parallel and series circuits. Even the formula, you know, we just cram, la cram, la pour the formula. The formula explains something, why it's happening. So you have connected their, their, the classroom, even with real life. This is what the first simulation can do. Okay, so let me go back to the slides. So, so this is an example of questions. What happens to the brightness of the first bulb after the second bulb has been connected to the circuit? You can ask that question. What are the differences between the circuit with one bulb? You can draw two circuits on that simulation with one bulb and with two bulbs. Why is there less current flowing through two bulbs circuit than one light bulb? So you open open-ended question. You don't you do yes and no questions. Okay. And these are more examples of what challenge from questions. Okay, we not, might not be going to we might not be able to go into this um, simulation, which is what protons, neutrons, and all, because we have to go into the breakout session. But in the breakout sections, I have fantastic facilitators. Rita is here, Godfrey is here, Richard also is also here. Let me try to uh, contact Richard now. Richard is also here to join us. He's going to take on chemistry. We have superb people, okay, which will talk on challenge prompt questions, you know, setting uh, your, your uh, direct instruction is really not, direct instruction is those close-ended uh, instructions are really not okay when using the first simulation. During the course, you'll be taught on how to ask questions, okay, because the course is going to take you through the first pedagogies, how to ask open-ended question that will spark engagement and curiosity in learners, in your learners, okay? It will also explain interactive concept questions, how you can use this as homework. You can give them the simulation. Um, you know, this is a digital world. If you're in the secondary school, they can have, you can send a Google form and, you know, create something like this, okay? And tell them to use the simulation to try to on answer these questions and they will play with the simulations at home. And, you know, you can tell them to give an, a presentation, you know, take a poll and several ways you can infuse FET simulation into your teaching the Coursera course will go in depth, in, in depth into this. So uh, we are quickly going to go into a breakout session. Okay, for 20 minutes, as I said, um, Rita will take on um biology uh one minute i'm trying to because richard is somewhere invigilating is a is a chemistry teacher in ghana so he's preparing them for their was their was practicals in ghana hello Okay, so Zach, Zach, are you with, are you here, Zach? Zach, is the breakout room uh, ready now? Rita, okay, yeah. So let us quickly join the breakout rooms. Now we have C is for chemistry. We're going to enter into breakout room. C is for chemistry. B is for biology. M is for mathematics, you join me there, and P is for physics. You will see the breakout. So kindly, um, in the how do you get into the breakout session? You would see a button. When you click more, that's what we call breakout rooms. Then you will click and join which group, which room you want. Are you with me? So let us all go. Let us all join those rooms. Now you see chemistry, biology and what uh, mathematics, so click and join. Join and your facilitators will be there. So I would, I would wait for you here. <laughs> Richard, please join, join us now, please. Yes, it's time now. Yeah. In the middle of the past hour, it's a little bit. All right, thank you. So you have the breakout room. C is for chemistry. B, don't worry, your chemistry facilitator will soon be with you. 
B is for biology, M is for mathematics, P is for physics. So please join. If you are having difficulties joining, just drop in the chat box. Let me know so I can, I clicked more but can't see anything. How can I join KMC? Help me with the breakout I am for math. So if you don't see, if you are using your my, mobile phone, okay, there's a button either um where you see participant, there's a button where you will see breakout. When you get into breakout, then you pick, you select which of the rooms. Okay, I can't join biology math. Breakout sessions, no, okay. Your phone. Wait, let me try to join the meeting from my phone so I explain it well for you. As I know most people are using their phone. Okay. Let me join it from my phone so I explain. Because I see 100 people still in the main room. Aha. So Priscilla say on the phone is at the top left indicated your top left. Go to your top left. Okay. Go to your top left. Click breakout. Are you with me? Go to your top left and click what? Breakout. All right. There's a breakout icon. Okay. So have you seen that on your top left? Recording in progress. In progress. In progress. In progress. Mm. On your top left. Top left. Oh, it's going to echo. If you can see, you my, can phone, see my phone. Just here, here, you will see breakout room. On the top left, click there. No, it is not a, it is not a link. On the top left, where you see my video, click breakout room. You will see four boxes, four boxes, an icon, four boxes. Click on it, then choose the, the subject. Are you there? Godfrey, are you? Can you join your group? And you can join on your phone. Go to the top left. You you are not nobody is supposed to be here. Okay. Oluwa Kemi, are you having problems in joining? Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Are you with me? Yes, ma. Okay, so sorry because you know That's people funny. are having people are having yes, difficulty. Uh... Yeah, people are having difficulty in joining the group, the breakout session. So that's why I've been I've been here. Okay, I've been I've been uh, I've been okay. So please, I apologize. No problem. No problem. No problem. I apologize. Welcome. Yeah. So I'm going to share a link now. Yeah, my. Uh... Please, can we mute our microphones? Let us mute our microphones, yeah. 
let me quickly share a link now to a simulation. Check, check the chat box. Everyone check the chat box. So go to this link now. And I want you to play around it for five minutes. If you have seen the link, let me see a thumbs up. Or he, he raised hands. Have you seen the link in the chat box? Okay, good. So, yes, good. My math people, good. Okay, so go to this uh, simulation now and please play around. Play around it for five minutes. And go to the, um, which one will you go to? Uh, the shopping lab. Go to the one that says shopping lab. Let me share my screen. Go to the one that says shopping lab. This one. And play around with it. I give you five minutes. So I have to go help people go into the group. So I'm going to leave you shortly for five minutes and I'll be back. We have no study to Hello, my chemistry teachers. Please, Hello. Mr. Richard, Mr. Richard will be with you shortly. Shortly, he oh. will be with you. Please, I apologize. He's in Ghana, he's evangelating in Ghana. He's a chemistry teacher in Ghana. He's coming. Today, today Saturday, there's no exam going on. No, oh, he's in Ghana. He's not in Nigeria. Yes. Okay. No, no Ghanaian exam is going on today. Um, I mean, um, he's trying to prepare them. Okay. Yeah, he's trying to prepare them. I think you have an exam next week. So he's preparing them in the lab. He will soon be here. Please, I apologize, please. Okay. Oh, maybe can someone join another room? Mean in the meantime? Yes, yes, you can. But he'll be here soon. Okay. He's, I think he's already he's already here. Let me bring him here now. Hello, Richard. Hello. Richard, are you here? Unmute, unmute your microphone, Richard. Okay. Yes, please. All right, so um, can we start now? Good morning to all of you. Uh, yes, good morning from Ghana. Uh, this one, sorry. So I want to put it at uh, the same level. Huh? So that is above that. Then this one also somewhere here something different another angle to what you think okay so i'll go on before i open this i want you to take note of some things now if you go to the fed um yes hello my oh, yes yes everything is settled now so have we all gone through the 
the yeah the simulation have we gone through the simulation does anyone have something yes. to share you can unmute and share please good afternoon everyone good afternoon sir yeah i've gone through the simulation and it's a very nice one so i discovered that um for for the for the hapus we can we can toggle the price for the we can set the prices for each of the apples by toggling the dollars and then the apples same for the carrots and for the third thing there so okay. but um i I noticed that for the carrots and for the apples, we could not, I didn't see the weights, but for the third one, I saw the weights. But generally, it's been a very good experience. It's been a very fantastic one. Okay, so I think great. it's something, I, I think it has to do with rates. Like when you increase the number of apples, the dollar increases too. So I think if you teach rates, it can also teach um, proportion. It can yes. also teach a bit of um, variation too. Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you good, much. good job, good job. So I try to do this because this is quite elementary. Okay, when we join the main room or... Okay, so this is an element. Is there anyone that want to speak on this one before I, we go through a quadratic equation sim? Anyone want to speak on this? Anyone has anything um, he or she observed? Okay, Bosede, please speak. Hello, good afternoon, Ma. Good afternoon, Ma. Well, uh, I tried working on heat. From what the last speaker said, if I increase, increase my apple, it's not really affecting the rate at which dollar will increase. And maybe um, I'm not getting it. So I need maybe if an, if an example can be displayed so that we know how to operate this thing. So I put here. Okay. okay. Five. Yeah. It's just about increasing the price you want. So if you okay. want it to be two dollars, five okay. apples is what ten dollars, okay. and one apple is two dollars. Two dollars. Okay. 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 Do you see that? Yes, huh? I've seen that. So, yeah, so that's yeah. why before you know, before you get into class, you as a teacher have to understand your simulation. Uh -huh. Yes. You have to align it to your goals. You know, the simulation yeah. you can, as you said. You can teach rates, mm. you can teach proportion, mm. you can teach yeah. variation, you can teach several things. So it depends on your goal okay. you get. Okay. So you yeah. learn that part that would achieve the objective of your lesson and All right. try to construct questions that would help give the students scaffolding to learn that objective. Okay, okay. Thank you, Ma. Yeah, okay, thank you. Mr. Chima, you can quickly speak. Okay, thank you very much. I just want to add something to what uh, the previous uh, contributor said, just like saying that it can be used to teach uh, direct variation and so many other topics. I wanted to add that it can also be used to teach counting in groups for those mm. in elementary, like yeah. primary three or primary four. Counting in yeah. groups is very, very useful. Thank Good. you. Okay, great. Great one. Great one. Okay, let me quickly... Um, let me quickly go. Where are my maths? Maths, maths, maths. Let me quickly open this. For those in senior secondary. You know, quadratic has been a major problem. In fact, I was if I take you to the WIAC website, okay, where no, you can always check for YEC examiner's reports. Where is it? YEC online. When you go there, um, where is it? E-learning. When you go to e-learning, uh, maths. Okay, basic. Uh, where's maths? Where's maths? General maths. Um, let's say I go to the latest one, which is uh, 2019 Watts for School Paper 2. That's their theory. Okay. Um, students' weakness, chief examiner observed. Okay, you can check for several years. And you see that there's a consistency in students not getting quadratic graph. Look at the first thing in the e weakness is what my master teachers, you agree. Our students, they are always weak in graph. 
Let me see your hands. If you agree, let me see your thumbs up. <laughs> okay. So they always have problems in understanding their graphs. Okay. Inadequate knowledge of drawing graphs. This is one of the weakness of students. Okay. I see Mr. Regina, you know, his hands are up. Allow, oh, uh -huh. So it's quite difficult for them to understand. So how will you help them? Here, look at this. Okay. You know, the shape of a graph is determined by your value of A, if it is positive or negative. If your graph is U, you get uh, the value of A must be positive. But if it becomes, if value of A is negative, you can see the graph would be N. So with this, you can explain all those things so that, you know, when they get into the hall, they see that their particular equations, they see their table, when they're filling their table, they should know that when they are plotting, they should have an idea of how the graph would look from the value of A, okay? So this you can use to teach. Okay, I can't portray on this because our time is up and I'm going to push everyone now to the main group so we can wrap up. I know it's quite, you know, it's quite uh, short. So uh, this you can use and definitely on the WhatsApp group. So it's, we can always communicate well. All right, so let me close all rooms now and we are going to see in your other in the main group. Everyone is going to be push, pushed to the main group in sixty seconds. Okay, so let me just quickly speak on this before we are all pushed to the main group. All right, so you can see here, you can use this to teach and explain about your graphs. All right, when the value of b changes, the value of b is always where the y-intercept is. Can you see this? You can use this. Isn't this wonderful? If you like this, let me see a thumbs up for my math teachers, especially uh, senior secondary. Let me see a thumbs up in the chat box. Okay. So this is quite key and important, and this is what they can use. So there are several other things that you can use these simulations to teach, not only in secondary, even in tertiary, your year one students. Some of them still don't even know how to plot graph, especially in their prep. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. So quickly, I want one person from each room to share. Let us start with Rita's room. Anyone from Rita's room want to share? Uh, you know what 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 went popping in the room? Let's let's hear. Yes, I'm sorry. That was oh, fast. Biology, biology. Oh, biology. I'm sorry. But I'm sorry. Biology, biology, let's hear what happened. What what popped? What sopped in your in your group? Let us hear one person, please. Okay, I see Michael. Please um unmute yourself. You can unmute yourself and speak. Yeah, um on our part, uh, we were introduced to a simulation exercise where there were um some rabbits. Uh, at first, it was only one rabbit, and we had the chance to add a meat. And then uh, they started multiplying. We could also uh, introduce different species of the rabbit so that they mate with them. Then there were some environmental factors, such as um, wolves and uh, limited food. So you could activate them, and they had an impact on the population of the rabbits. And uh, we observed that the brown rabbits were able to survive because of their color and the area they are blending or camouflaging in the environment. It was really an interesting uh, simulation. And I think using this to teach um, natural selection and evolution, as well as genetics, will be of great help. Great. Thank you so much. So I uh, thank you so much. Um, so you guys had a lovely time in uh, Rita's group of biology. Thank you so much, Rita. Thank you. And someone from the chemistry group, please. If you're from chemistry, in the chemistry group, group and I apologize uh, uh, for the short time, but chemistry group, anyone? Mr. Ambrose, are you from the chemistry? Okay, let's say Stephen, you can speak. You can speak, Stephen Williams. Hello, Stephen, you can speak on. 
Okay, you can't hear me. Uh, uh, any other person? Mr. Ambrose, are you from the, the chemistry group? Yes, I'm from the chemistry group. Okay, please speak. Thank you. Yes, uh, but I want to ask a question from the biology group, the one who just said something. How, mm. what, what was happening before the population was taking place? Was it demonstrated? Rita, can you, can you unmute and, and speak? Okay, so, um, well, I don't know if you're familiar with this uh, natural selection. Um, before, the, before the population enlargement, we had just one particular um, bunny and it was white in color. And as soon as you get into the simulation, even as a student, we, we allowed one of the uh, teachers, one of the teachers, we, we did open play. So one of the teachers, uh, Mrs. Aloba, she, she, she got into the simulation and it was her first, uh, her very first experience with that simulation. And the first thing she saw was the prompt to add a mate. She added a mate and another white bunny appeared. And then she looked around the simulation. She was like, oh, it, it gave her an opportunity to say, okay, um, do you want to choose a dominant gene that is brown or you want to make the brown a recessive gene? She decided to try choose a dominant gene. So she made all those selections. She chose a dominant gene that was brown. And then she saw how the, how the, how the gene mutation occurred. She, uh, um, after the first, after generation zero, all the, all the offsprings were white. Then after the generation uh, one, the gene mutation had already occurred. And by the time we had, let's say about 20 bunnies, there were like nine brown bunnies. And so, when she came wow. to the group, wow. she told us all this. And I asked her, did you ever um, play with this simulation? She said, no, this was her first time. So uh, um, the simulation allows you to self-explore and make discoveries yourself. You know, so yeah, that's what you see. That's Thank the you. first thing you come Thank across. You. That, that, that's beautiful. Now, in the chemistry group, we explore how covalent compounds were formed. And then uh, when you pick elements or elements from one side and I pick from another side, you put them together you see some compounds be formed. I was able to form water and uh, I was able to form a, a carbon dioxide. And I also observed that some elements, when you combine them, you don't get a compound form, meaning that they cannot combine to give you a particular compound. And that was what I have learned. Good, good, thank you. Anyone from the physics group? Please, okay. Kabi Jumo, Jumo, Jimo, are you from the physics group? Are you from the physics yes, group? Okay, I'm from please, the physics group. Please speak. Okay, the experience in the physics group was an inevitable one. We had to test the conductivity between two materials, which was brick and iron. And after some time, we discovered the rate of increase in temperature of both materials. But actually, that led to, that led to further research because we couldn't reach a consensus on what actually was happening. We are expecting the iron to have a more increase in temperature than the brick. So that led to a further research, which we've already reached a consensus to reach out on and check for in further oh. sessions. Good. Thank you. Great, great, great. Thank you. Anyone from the maths group? The maths group. Victor, are you from the maths group? Okay, let me, uh, Ola, Ola Yemi, you can speak. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it, yeah it, is a, it was a wonderful uh, class because even without teaching the quadratic equation, because we dealt with quadratic equations and without even teaching it, the student will know how the, the, the graph will look like, either parabola or hyperbola, that is, N shape or U shape, when they discover the coefficient of the S square, the student will automatically understand that in any exam, when the coefficient of that S square is negative, they know, they will see that, uh, they will know how the graph must look like, even before solving, before putting all the value variable of X and Y axis into their graph. And it is a wonderful because they will see it themselves and nobody is pushing them. Nobody is giving them any other thing. They will see themselves that if my, Coefficient is like this, automatically my graph should look like this. Therefore, 
that aspect is already clear to them and they cannot, with this simulation, they cannot, you know, as a person, if okay. the teacher will handle very well, they can, I believe that once they know that there's an error, they automatically know that this question, there's an error there. Mm. Oh, thank you so much, Olawale. So um, we can see that we have several ways. You, we've had people's, even in the maths, we did elementary, we did ratio and proportion for the primary classes. There's fraction, okay? Because we know the need of maths, even from elementary, it is very important because it is what encourages them to even seek for further STEM subjects. If a child doesn't like maths from basic level, it will be so hard for them to even want to go into uh, physics, chemistry, and the likes. So we have simulations for elementary schools, your fractions, your number play that makes maths nice and fun to learn. All right. So I'm sorry, we've taken your time six minutes over. So I have to, you know, I know so many people uh, want to speak and all, but we have to stop. Now, the next thing that we have to do is we need to join the WhatsApp group. I have. Um, shared the link. I've been sharing the link in the chat box. Okay. But I'm still going to send out an email to everyone that has registered. Okay. And um, uh, we, we, we have sent emails for the Coursera course. Okay. Uh, you would receive it, as I said, from the beginning before tomorrow, you should receive three emails. Wait, let me, let me go in to the beginning of the slide. You would receive three emails that look like this. Okay, Nigerian STEM teach. You will see the first one will be on introduction. The second course will be on uh, activity design. The third one will be on implementation. Okay, so please, please, as I emphasize, you need to register through this email. Any of the courses you need to register because if you register directly on the Coursera app, it's going to add you, uh, um, charge you $69. Okay, the Fed has made this free. So please follow this. If you follow through your email, it will be free. Please, very, very important, okay? Because that's a typical issue that, you know, I've had in workshop one, very important. When you finish the course one, which is intro, which I will show you now, you will go back to your email and join from Activity Design. Don't join from Coursera app, okay? And when you are done with Activity Design, you'll go back also to your email and join implementation. And you'll be given certificates from the University of Colorado Boulder each time you complete each of the courses. Okay? So for, uh, for this week assignment, uh, for this week course, you are, we are looking at uh, introduction to FED simulation where you are going to have um, week one, week two. The week one will be on intro. It will require you selecting sim. Then week, week two will be on whole class strategies. Let me quickly go. Sorry. Let me quickly go into that mail. Yeah. Make week one. Let me join. So, yeah. So, this is how it is. You will see this email. Click on join. And it takes you to Coursera. If you haven't registered on Coursera, use the same email that you use to register on this course, all right, to join, to register on Coursera. Please don't use a different email. Use the same email because it is that email that we have used to enroll you on the course. So all you just need to do is accept that um, invitation to enroll, all right? So uh, just want to go into the course. So this is just a student view, not my own back end view. All right. So you will see here, go to course, you click in, click on it. It's very interactive. Also, if you are going to use your phones, please, I know most of us don't have um, laptops. On your phone, there you are going to see on your Chrome browser, when you enter into the course, you see three dots. When you click on those dots, go to enable desktop site. So it's going to make your phone act like a desktop. So it will be easy for you to go through the courses. Okay. So you are to do week one. All right. Go through all these things for week one. Okay. Um, submit your assignments. I'm going to share videos on how to upload on the WhatsApp group. That's why it's very important you're on the group. Then you go to week two. On week two, you are to select whichever 
there's whole class. There are three strategies there. You have to pick one. It's either you pick whole class, it's either you pick interactive lecture demonstration or concept questions. You pick one and go through it and submit your assignment on it. All right, so you can see this is where you submit your assignment. And very important, you have to peer grade. Peer grading others means reviewing others' work. All right, which is very key. Don't worry on the group. I'm going to be opening it, opening it up some particular time of the day to take up your questions. And also there's a there's an FAQ list I would also send to you, which would answer most of your questions. Any problem you're gonna have um, navigating the course, it answers it. That's, those are questions that, you know, um, people from the workshop one has been asking. So we have gathered all this to an FAQ that would help anyone answer um, their questions. But I tell you the most important thing, which I have emphasized is to please, make sure you register through the emails sent to you and you won't have any problem. Most of the problems people are encountering, you won't have. Just make sure you join the group through the emails that will be sent to you. So thank you so much. And sorry for taking your time. Please, please, sorry, sorry for taking 10 minutes of your time. I thank you. Um, I thank my colleagues, uh, Rita, Godfrey, Richard, um, Zach is here, Shola, is also here for joining us in this um, uh, today's webinar. Thank you, thank you so much, guys. And um, we're going to meet and interact more on the group. Thank you from FET. Thank you from the University of Colorado. Also, you know, DTW Tutorials. Hi, I'm here trying to support you in uh, promoting STEM education in Africa, Nigeria. So thank you so much. Before we go i can see people before we go you need to i need an exit ticket from everyone before you hop up from this meeting just on the in the chat box one thing you gain just type it down one thing you gain in the chat that's your exit ticket before you leave one thing you gained what let me see it yeah thank you you're welcome everyone you're welcome okay let me see it in the chat box one thing you gain before you leave one thing you gain let me see. And let's see. The simulations are really interesting. Uh huh. I want to know. It's interesting, yes. But what is the one thing you gained? Like in the class, you go for a lecture. What is that one thing that you gain? Okay. It's very exciting. Genetics and mutation, uh, mut uh, mutations, good. FET is free. Yes, absolutely free. You know, it's unbelievable. People like, how do these people make money? They make money through support and grants from Microsoft, from MasterCard and all okay i can now teach good how to build oh wow it's an active individualized learning i see okay so you're free to leave once you give your exit ticket you're free to leave thank you so much and so sorry for taking 14 minutes of your time all right stem based learning i gain ways wow okay thermal conductivity how to uh, sign up to be a fellow oh, that will make my class interactive, interactive learning, revealing. Thank you, Alba. Thank you, Ma Matthew. Adego K. Faith, thank you. Adeolu, thank you. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you. 153 people stayed to the end. Wow. Awesome. 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 My STEM educators, you are wonderful. You are great. You know, this, this shows uh, passion to imbibe in your students. That's what this shows, passion to imbibe. That's what this shows, okay? If you have further questions on the group, you can drop them, okay? Promoting learners-centered learning process. Good, good. Again, easy ways of making mathematics interesting for primary students. Nice one, nice one, okay? That's from Elizabeth. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, okay. Uh, Self-discovery on the paths of children and collaboration. Great. Ade uh, for Luke. Okay. Ben, uh, Benjamin says interactive teaching. The video recording will be shared on the group and also sent to your emails. Active learning raises curiosity of learners. Nice, nice. The use of technology in STEM education. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a simulation, a simulation lesson that will empower me to educate my teachers in my circuit. Nice one. Yes, we are here for teachers. 
and you can they can still join the group you can still share this they can still be on board you know this is a four weeks workshop okay so four months uh four weeks for us to get the, uh, get it done you know get our certificates and also start implementing in our classrooms all right good good structure series of learning outcomes both practical and theoretical makes math interesting for the children interactive class first is a powerful tool in teaching and learning oh great 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 one from uh, uche chuku from michael i can explain difficult species concepts yes with first seems great how to navigate the quadratic equation solution nice Okay, to explain a whole lot of concepts. Great. Makes learning easy and interesting. Great one. Uh, it was just, I didn't get an, oh, oh, just join the group, um, Francis. Francis from Ghana, join the group. Let me still, when you're on the group, you are going to get everything. I'm going to share everything. Okay, join the group, Francis, and everything would be uh, explained on the group. He says, with this chemistry will not be abstract again. Yes, yes, it won't be. But that Gojka implementation of FET learning platform and app. Great one, great one. Thank you so much, everyone. I think I've had enough, <laughs> enough, uh, you know, comments, 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 comments. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, y'all. Thank you also, Isaac, for being here. You're welcome. Yes, I would upload it on YouTube and I would share. Okay. I should start it. Yes, yes. Okay. I would send everything, everything about the uh, Coursera. Please, the WhatsApp group, you know, that's where we would communicate well. So please be on, on the WhatsApp group so you can drop every every of your queries. And I'm going to share you, share with you, as I said, FAQs that would help us, help you um, navigate your way throughout the course. So thank you so much, everyone, for staying. Thank you for giving me your exit, exit tickets. Thank you, thank you. Yes, my YouTube channel is DTW Tutorials. Um, DTW Tutorials. Yeah, just search on YouTube. You'll find my YouTube channel, DTW Tutorials. Oh, yes, you're welcome, um, Ayinde. You're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you for also being here. Uh, for also being here. Thank you for standing in, you know, being an amazing STEM educator. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, my YouTube channel is DTW Tutorials. DTW Tutorials, that is it. Okay. I can. I would also post it on the WhatsApp group. All right. So thank you. We're going to be sending out all the Coursera invites. You would get them and uh, maybe by this evening or later tomorrow, I would share some things, open up the group and you can start asking your questions. Okay. DTW, not GT, is DTW tutorials. Just search on YouTube. Okay. It's destined to win tutorials. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for staying to the end of this video. All right. Of this webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Rita. Go free. Are you see here? Rita, are you here? I think she has left. Yes. Yes. Oh, Godfrey, yeah. You want to say something? Yes. No, no, no. I just appreciate the teachers uh, for coming on board. Yeah. So that they can, we can be able to learn together and shape the future of our students, our kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I'm happy for you guys. Yeah. Thank you, Godfrey. I appreciate. Yes, it's a four weeks workshop and you get a certificate. Yes. You are getting a certificate from the University of Colorado Boulder. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Okay. Everything I'm going to also share that on the group. I hope you're on the WhatsApp group. Let me share the WhatsApp group link again. So you join. <clears throat> Okay. So thank you. I'm going to end the meeting. So everyone, bye. Bye.